Here's a quick challenge. Can you tell within 60 seconds whether your car trouble is a bad battery or a failing alternator? In this video, you'll learn the single driveway test that settles it, and you'll see the exact voltage numbers to look for with a multimeter. You'll also find out how a jump start alone can point you toward the right answer. That way, you can stop wasting money on the wrong repair and feel confident about what's really going on under the hood. And it all starts with that little red battery light on your dash. Why the battery light isn't really about your battery. When most drivers see that red warning icon appear, the instinct is to assume the battery itself is failing. But here's the key. That symbol isn't a verdict on your battery's health. Often, that light points to the charging system, frequently the alternator, not the battery itself. It's one of the most misunderstood warnings on the dash because a picture of a battery naturally leads people to blame the wrong part. That misunderstanding gets expensive fast. A common scenario looks like this. The light comes on, you stop by an auto parts store, and you leave with a brand new battery. Everything seems fine until a day or two later, your headlights dim while you drive at night and the engine eventually dies. What actually happened? The alternator wasn't charging, so the new battery drained down just like the old one. The light wasn't accusing your battery, it was signaling a problem in the charging system from the very beginning. Here's the technical side of it. The real job of that light is to warn when system voltage drops outside a safe range. A healthy alternator keeps things steady at typically around 13.5 to 14.7 volts while the engine runs. Different sources give slightly different numbers, but 13.5 to 14.7 volts is a reliable rule of thumb for most cars. If voltage falls below this, or in less common cases, spikes too high, the light comes on. That doesn't necessarily mean the alternator stopped spinning, it means the system's electrical flow isn't stable enough to run everything properly. Now let's look at how the alternator fits into the bigger picture. In many modern cars, the alternator doesn't regulate itself alone. Some vehicles use an internal voltage regulator built right into the alternator, while others let the ECU or PCM control charging directly. That means a failure could be mechanical, electrical, or even software related. This is different from older designs, where the alternator worked more independently with a simple regulator, Today, the charging system is part of a larger feedback loop. When you switch on the heater, lights, or defroster, the ECU tells the alternator how much extra output to provide. If the alternator can't charge, it's often one of a few causes. A blown alternator fuse, a slipped or broken belt or faulty pulley, corroded wiring or connectors, worn internal parts like brushes or diodes, or a control module or regulator issue. Thinking of it this way gives you a checklist of the real problems that warning light could be pointing to, not just the battery itself. To keep the relationship clear, picture the alternator as the generator that actually produces electricity, while the battery is just storage. The alternator is the source, the battery is the backup. That one line explains why changing the battery won't cure a deeper charging fault. The toughest part for most drivers is that the light doesn't specify which piece failed. It doesn't tell you if your alternator is weak, if the belt is slipping, or if there's corrosion on a connector. That's why many people give up at this point and pay for replacements they might not need. Getting it right requires a way to separate battery issues from alternator issues quickly, and you can do that without a shop. And that's where a simple driveway test comes in. Done correctly, it can confirm in minutes whether your alternator is supplying the voltage your car needs or whether your battery is carrying the load alone. The one test, that solves the mystery. So how do you actually cut through the guesswork and know for sure what's failing? This is where the one test that solves the mystery comes in. It's simple, requires minimal tools, and gives you a clear answer in minutes. Start with the most basic check, the jump start scenario. If you connect jumper cables, get the car running, and then it stalls again soon after you disconnect them, that's a strong sign the alternator isn't charging the system. A jump only buys the battery, a temporary boost. If the alternator can't take over once the engine is running, the battery alone won't keep things alive for long. That single outcome already points you in the right direction. But here's the catch. Maybe you jump the car and it stays running for days, or it quits 10 minutes later. Because the two parts work so closely together, symptoms overlap and timing varies. That's why relying on jump start behavior alone isn't enough. You need to confirm the diagnosis with numbers. This is where a digital multimeter makes all the difference. It costs less than a tank of gas, and it takes guesswork out of the picture. 
Here's the simple four-step process. Step one, with the engine off and accessories off, set the meter to DC volts. Place the red lead on the battery's positive terminal and the black lead on the negative. Step two, check the resting battery voltage. A healthy reading should be at least 12.2 volts. Less than that means the battery is already weak or discharged. Step three, start the engine and let it idle with lights and accessories still off. Now look again at the meter. A proper charging system should show between 13.5 to 14.7 volts, though some vehicles allow up to about 15 volts. Step four, rev the engine gently to about 1500 or 2000 RPM. The number should stay steady in that same 13.5 to 14.7 range. Stability here confirms the alternator is producing dependable output. Always do this baseline test with all accessories switched off. Things like headlights or the defroster, add load that can drag voltage down temporarily and confuse the reading. Once you see the baseline, you can repeat with accessories on if you want to see how the alternator handles heavier demand. Inside the car, you can also look for supporting signs. Headlights that dim at idle but brighten as you accelerate, dashboard lights that flicker, or windows that move sluggishly often match up with low meter readings. These little clues strengthen your conclusion. And if you still want a professional confirmation, there's an easy next step. Many auto parts stores will check your charging system for free. Using an alternator analyzer or carbon pile tester, you can literally drive up and say, can you run a quick charging system test while it's still in the car? They'll hook up the equipment and give you a readout on both the battery and alternator. If your multimeter points to alternator trouble, Keep a quick checklist in mind before you order parts. Check the alternator's main fuse or fusible link. Inspect the serpentine belt and tensioner, since a slipping belt means lost charging. Make sure battery and alternator connections aren't corroded. And if those are fine, the issue is likely internal alternator wear, things like brushes or diodes or regulator and ECU control problems. The power of this test is that it turns confusion into certainty. Within a few minutes, you'll know whether your alternator is carrying its share of the work or forcing the battery to do the heavy lifting. And when you can separate fact from guesswork like this, you protect your car and your wallet. With that clarity in hand, it's worth stepping back to see the bigger picture of why the alternator matters so much in your vehicle's electrical system. The alternator's role is to generate power while the engine runs, while the battery mainly stores energy and delivers the initial start. That's why knowing which one is failing keeps you from guessing wrong. The two quick checks to remember are simple. First, if a jump start works, but the car dies soon after, that usually points to the alternator. Second, use a multimeter, 12.2 volts or higher with the engine off, and a stable 13.5 to 14.7 volts once it's running, confirm proper charging. If your reading shows low voltage, get a free alternator test at an auto parts store or see a mechanic. Comment below with your car's make and what your multimeter showed. I'll be featuring real cases in upcoming videos. Know the numbers, do the test, and skip the wrong replacement. For more quality vehicle maintenance tips, hit the like and subscribe button. 